So if I have TV today, it's uh, Olivier Rafovich here from Jerusalem, and with me is someone that maybe you know, maybe you don't know, I believe that you should know him. His name is Malcolm Edding. Malcolm, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Olivier. It's great to be with you, and good afternoon to you. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Tell me, uh, I know what you are doing here in Israel, but tell us, what are you doing in Israel, Malcolm? Well, I'm the executive director of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, which is probably the biggest pro-Israel organization in the world in that we are working in more than 114 countries of the world for and on behalf of Israel, defending Israel's right to exist in peace and security, uh, fighting anti-Semitism, fighting the media bias of the world, and generally supporting Israel where and how we can with many initiatives, even humanitarian ones. So this is a vast organization that is uh, expressing Christian solidarity with the Jewish state from all over the world. What is pushing you? What is your, uh, your uh, ideology? The ideology is really uh, something that goes back 4,000 years when God made a promise to Abraham and said that uh, the land of Israel is the eternal homeland of the Jewish people. And when you think that that promise has been played out in history, even through Israel's exiles. It is phenomenal, Oliver, that, that Israel, having been twice exiled, like no other nation upon the face of the earth, has then returned to the same piece of land to rebuild her national institutions and resurrect everything that makes government government. So uh, this is a phenomenal thing. So we do not base our support of Israel on prophecy or end time phenomenon, we base it on a promise that God gave to Abraham 4,000 years ago. It's a love story <coughs> between you and the Jewish people? It's a love story between us and the Jewish people. It's also <clears throat> a story of appreciation um, from the Christian world because everything really that the Christian world has is Jewish. It's a Jewish Bible and for the Christian world, a Jewish Messiah and Jewish prophets and Jewish apostles. And uh, so Christians who are involved with us, and there are millions of them, also seek to pay back their debt of gratitude to the Jewish people. These are Israel's friends, full stop. People ask us, why do you do this? Well, because of this foundation. But actually, what does that foundation mean? It means that we are Israel's friends. I think we are Israel's best friends. Many Jews, not all of Jews, sometimes were skeptical about uh, Christian uh, churches, like the Catholic Church, like today. Uh, you uh, represent the Christian world, but you know that there's still some problematics with uh, the church, with the Catholic uh, Pope today. How can you explain to Israel, to Israeli people, to Jews, that some <coughs> Christians are doing so and some others are doing something else? Well, I think, I think first I'm, of all... I'm sorry to... No, 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 I understand, Oliver, and I think that's a very good question, and it, it needs to be addressed. I think uh, that, number one, we understand why many Jews and many Israelis um, sometimes have suspicions. Because of Christian Jewish history, you cannot deny the, the hundreds and thousands of years of Christian anti-Semitism. But we represent evangelical Christians... Uh, who, who are in all parts of the world and are a modern-day phenomenon, um, the fastest-growing part of the church today, and uh, they are not really part of the historical old church, as we would call it, and therefore they are free from a particular doctrinal perspective that saw no significance in Israel or the Jewish people any longer. And so we are... Uh, a different stream of the church. Of course, we do always invite Catholics to be part of our movement. We love them. We don't reject them. Uh, and uh, we also, of course, are saddened by the ongoing debate about the Pope of the Holocaust years. We would think at this stage and in view of the Holocaust that the Catholic Church would be a little bit more sensitive to these issues and, uh, and, and, and not inject this type of discourse into the Jewish-Christian debate. It's just very hurtful for the Jewish people. We feel at this point um, 
It's better that Israel deal directly. It's better in a way, quote unquote, that the victims speak directly to, to the situation or the entity that has brought such hurt upon them historically. So we would rather see this worked out between Israel and the Catholic Church in a way that... Uh, I'm hearing a <coughs> lot of uh, pain in your voice when you talk about this. Absolutely. I, you know, we live here. Um, we are a partner with Yad Vashem, the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. We have a desk at Yad Vashem. Uh, part of our life is living in the context of the Holocaust and seeing the pain in Jewish lives, especially the older generation who lived through it. I mean, I, I have many friends in Israel who saw the trauma of Hitler's Nazi regime played out in their lives. They were death camp survivors. And I think it's very insensitive for Christians to, to deal with such a tragedy that is unprecedented in history uh, in such a way. And, and, and I would call upon the Catholic Church to reconsider this type of action and to, and, to, and to consider um, the hurt that this type of decision would make if they continue to beatify and to declare uh, uh, Pope Pius a saint. I saw the last uh, week uh, a huge uh, event that you have organized at the Bin Uma, the Congress uh, mm -hmm. place in Jerusalem. Thousands of people from all over the world just came to celebrate mm -hmm. Tanabekal's uh, feast, the Sukkot. Right. Uh, I heard many times the word that you are here for defending Israel, to protect Israel. You even had some... Uh, um, spectacle with a song about an army to raise against the uh, enemies of Israel. Are you ready to defend uh, uh, practically Israel with your, well, people, I, with your forces? Well, I think the International Christian Embassy, uh, as many of your viewers may know, and as surely as you do know, has been here for 29 years. We have a track record of defending Israel in many circumstances, in many forums. For example... We have been involved in Europe, in the European Parliament. We've taken up issues of anti-Semitism. We've taken up issues, for example, of Palestinian books that consider to that continue to propagate hatred against the Jewish people, anti-Semitism. Uh, we've had campaigns in one way or another um, all over the world at different times on behalf of Israel. Um, and, and at present, of course, we've launched a global campaign against Ahmadinejad. Uh, we were the organization that, that uh, raised a worldwide petition uh, and presented it to Ban Ki-moon just uh, three weeks ago, calling for Ahmadinejad to be indicted for incitement to genocide. And the United Nations Charter demands this. So we just calling on the United Nations to do what its charter says it should be doing. And, you know, to launch a global petition like this is no small feat. It takes planning, it takes work, it takes activism, and we, we had thousands and thousands of endorsements uh, calling for this to happen, and we've now broadened that out into a bigger global action against Ahmadinejad. And I think these are the type of things that are very practical and uh, we've entered this war, quote unquote, on behalf of Israel to stop Ahmadinejad acquiring nuclear uh, weaponry. You said last week again, I repeat, because I was there and I was mm. very impressed by your speech, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Malcolm Edding, that uh, even with a nuke, uh, the Iranian president cannot succeed because God That's right. is uh, yep. with us. I think, you, I think even the what most. Do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, I think even today. If you have to look at Israel objectively, she shouldn't be existing. I mean, a, a, a country and a people that have outlasted every ancient people of time and history. You know, the Romans were here, the Romans have gone, the Egyptians were here, the Egyptians have gone, the Assyrians were here, the Assyrians have gone, the Syrians were here, the Syrians have gone, the Nazis were here, the Nazis are gone. Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. We're always vigilant, Oliver. Hopefully. Hopefully. But... Israel has a phenomenal history, and the only way you can account for that is the faithfulness of a God who, in Genesis chapter 12, called this nation into existence. That is the only real explanation. Now, if you believe that, then you have to also believe 
that as he says in the book of Psalms, that he watches over Israel day and night. And while there may be turbulent and difficult times, we have no doubt that Ahmadinejad will definitely not wipe Israel off the face of the earth. He will have to remove God from his throne before he removes Israel from the face of the earth. This is the confidence we have in your God and in your Bible. Malcolm, before we, uh, we, we leave each other, I would like you to send a message to, to the world, to people, about what should be done today to protect Israel, to protect the, the world, democracies, against such people like Ahmed mm -hmm. I'd like to say to all the viewers of InfoLife, and uh, uh, this is a very, very important time in which we are living, and it's a very dangerous time. And I don't have to remind you that Ahmadinejad has every month, almost every week sometimes, uh, restated his desire to liquidate, destroy, or remove the Jewish state in one way or another. You know that he too is a Holocaust denier. And dear friend, I call upon you wherever you are to be a part of this global campaign in whatever way you can to stop Ahmadinejad acquiring nuclear weapons. The Middle East and indeed the world will change dramatically if this were to happen. It will become a more dangerous place for all of us, for our children, and especially for Israel. We need your help now. Thank you very much, and hope to see you uh, again here uh, in Jerusalem with us at InfoLife TV. And I believe that uh, you are more than important. You are uh, vital for Israel, for the Jewish people. And uh, if you love us, we love you too. Thank you so much. I appreciate your invite. We will definitely be together again. Thank you.